So, before we start, I want you to stand up. And give a high five to the person next to you. To celebrate that we all love learning and do it with a big smile because this is why we're here at TEDx today. So, let's have you sit back. Relax, close your eyes, and try to imagine the world we're going to live in in 2050. What does your home city look like? Your school, your workplace, your daily life? What do you see? How does it feel? Is it an exciting feeling? Or a negative one? Are you surprisingly amazed or shocked? Take the feeling with you and now open your eyes and come back to 2022. Before I turned 18, I decided to take a journey to find out what life really means. At this time, life seems pretty predictable. You go to high school, university, get a job, have a family, and then you're pretty much dead. So I'm skipping 40 years here. Well, at the time I decided to not live a normal life, a life that is predictable and structured. So one week after my high school graduation, I flew to the other side of the world to find out what life really means. I found myself in the middle of the Australian outback, learning from Aborigines and living in symbiosis with nature. I bought a bike and drove 2,000 kilometers from the north to the south of Vietnam. I did a skydive, snorkeled in Thailand, and meditated for eight hours a day without electricity and sleeping on a stone bed in the middle of Sri Lanka. I was fearless. I got all the information I needed from the internet, Gen Z-like, and moved on. I avoided cities, being mostly in nature, and quickly realized that you do not need much to make a living. Not the newest iPhone from Apple, nor the newest sneaker release of Michael Jordan's and co. It didn't matter. People were happy and living a minimalistic lifestyle. But this, of course, is a different story. However, from that point, I started to reconsider our Western consumption life when seeing the threat of plastic in Indonesia. At the time, I learned surfing and was continuously stepping on a plastic bag with every single meter I walked. And to give you a fact here, eight million, eight million metric tons of plastic are dumped into the ocean every single year. By 2050, seriously, there will be more plastic by weight than fish in the ocean. But plastic pollution it's just one of the challenges of the changing time we face today, right? Our climate is getting hotter. Bushfires, especially in Australia, the country has started to question our world's consumerism, is getting more extreme. But what does it all come down to? Why well, I'm telling you the fact that you already know that our ecosystem is not functioning right, that we are losing to live in symbiosis with nature, that we are missing our momentum to switch to a bright 2050. Well, over the past 200 years, human intelligence has been responsible for the Industrial Revolution. With an increasing amount of refinement, our technologies have developed to what they are today. This revolution has caused an enormous amount of prosperity and has changed life of many forever. But can you identify the various shadow sides? Since the Industrial Revolution, our wealth and well-being have relied on the intensive exploitation of natural resources, from metals, minerals, to biomass, genetic resources, and biodiversity. Global resource, and to give you a percentage here, with an ever-growing economy, global resource consumption and extraction 
have increased by 78 percent between 1980 and 2008 and kept rising from that moment. Nowadays, our world consumes 100 billion tons of raw materials to produce anything from trains, cars, plastic flowers, toilet paper and so much more. Global wealth has grown overall. But at the expense of future prosperity and by exacerbating inequality. On the surface, this all seems great, but let's face it, it has come at a huge cost to our planet, and this, however, cannot sustain industrial and human growth forever. And to give you a spoiler now, scientists know by the end of the century, half of our species could be facing extinction. Carbon dioxide is at the highest in two million years. We're losing 1.2 trillion tons of ice each year. Seven years have been the warmest in the world. So climate change is undeniably the biggest market failure of the 20th and 21st century. In fact, we only have one planet Earth. By 2050, however, we will consume as we would have three. And when looking at the Overshoot Day, the calendar day where human resource consumption exceeds the Earth's capacity to generate those resources this year, the date is shocking. We are at war with nature, and we are at war with resources. And the line goes further. Global resource consumption is expected to double in the next 40 years, where annual waste generation will be increased by 70% by 2050. Our, in, our current economic system, based on the assumption of infinite growth, is incomplete. It has now come the time to take a step back to rethink human activities on our planet. So, how do we change our human behavior before raising straight to the finish line? Well, do you remember what I've told you at the beginning when I was bringing anecdotes of my teenage years? It all comes down to one thought. The solution lies in the life of the indigenous tribes who live in symbiosis with nature, in the forest as a regenerative system, and in the life cycle of all living things. In my first semester, a university professor told me, you will not fit into the system. And she was correct, because the current system where we live and work in has to change. So what is the change of the challenges time? What is the answer to climate change? What is the, the solution to a bright 2050? Well, and one of the solutions is definitely a circular economy. A circular economy which makes us think differently and reconnects us with the natural world. A circular economy where waste of one is food for the other. A circular economy which is regenerative, where nothing is thrown out. In our current economic system, only 8.6% are getting cycled back. So what does it mean? We need to take a step back from the take, make, dispose, to reuse, reduce, recycle and rethink. We need to shift to industrial system which is restorative and regenerative by intention and design. And this comes down to a circular economy. And when thinking about the Paris Agreement, the United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development, shifting to renewable energies is only half the story. It's vital, yes, but would only address 55% of the global emissions by adopting principles of the circular economy, eliminating waste and pollution, regenerative nature, circulating products and material, we can address the remaining, the missing, 45%. And think about it. For billions of years, our home planet, our Earth, operated in the perfect cycle. New life emerged from the same carbon that existed as life before. A truly circular economy mimics nature and ensures the restoration of our environment and reconnects us humans with the natural world. In 
in order to achieve this ideal? We of course require technologies. New technologies that can keep up with the demands and are capable of designing, prototyping and testing in a much faster, more agile way. But think about it. The airplane, for example, <coughs> we copied from the flight of birds. When humans started to study whales, scientists came up with the development of the submarine. The sonar system of animals such as dolphins and bats led to the development of sensors. Nature showed us so many times how the living things in the ecosystem works, and we can get a glimpse of that in the almost closed nutrition cycle of the Amazonas, the flowing of water, or the cycle of life. Nothing is linear. Everything is circular. And this is highly important to emphasize on nothing can grow forever. And today, with our technological advancements, our technologies, such as blockchain, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, we have tremendous amount of potential. We should use this potential, copy from the regenerative nature and unleash the potential for our generation and the generation of our future. So, today, I want to remind you to think differently, to think about how can we integrate more circularity in our system? How can we create a regenerative system? And what does our, your 2050 look like? So, being entrepreneurial, my professor gave me a hint. The current system needs to change to overcome the challenges of the changing time we face today. And in a world where we're connected to the World Wide Web, we can get all the information we need. We can learn from each other. We can create collaboratively with the help of technology and the use of produced data a circular change. When you see the economy through a circular lens, you see brand new opportunities. In fact, let's consume less, let's consume better, and let's create collaboratively a circular change. So back to the start. What do you see when you think about 2050? A bright 2050. What do you see? How does it feel? To choose how we look at nature makes all the difference. And I know it's very easy to maintain the track that everyone is currently on. But we need to stop. To stop the war with nature and copy from nature and use our technologies as an accelerator of change. And I want to remind you today to think differently. Differently than the old system and older generation and school taught us to do so. To, to think differently and act for the future and the future of the next generation. Challenging times require bold call to action. And with today's technological advancements, we have all the opportunities we need. We should use the opportunity to tear the steering wheel to a bright 2050. Let us make a circular economy through our actions happen. Because when we all start to act, there is no limit. <laughs>